Josh Rubin from East West Healing Performance. Today I want to talk to you about insomnia, sleep problems. I would say 9 out of 10 people that come into our clinic have sleep problems. With, you know, financial stress nowadays, environmental stress, family stress, um, you name it. A lot of people are having trouble with sleep. There's all types of sleep alternatives. People are, are going to drugs and alcohol. Well, there's many reasons why we could be having sleep problems. And if you look at sleep, sleep is actually the easiest and cheapest principle where, where you can get a lot of repair and regeneration because at night or towards the end of the day, your awakening hormones, one of them such as cortisol, starts to come down and your repair and regeneration hormones go up. So you essentially should get a good night's sleep. And you should be actually getting a good night's sleep so you can repair physically from 10 to 2 and psychologically from 2 to 6. That's why a lot of these insomniac people can still think during the day because they're getting that psychological repair. But they're catabolic physically and breaking down and having lots of injury and, and look physically like hell because they're not getting that physical repair. So we're going to go over some of the reasons why and just some basic alternatives to sleep aids to help, sorry, to help with sleep. The first one is many people have sleep issues. Well, if we look at it from a spiritual perspective, there's always different levels of healing when it comes to an issue. One of them is a spiritual level or we can say the causal level. If we look at the chakras, the seventh chakra is like purpose, having a purpose in life, knowing who you are, where you're going. A lot of people live their life, they're living it for someone else, for their parents, they're in a job that they hate, and they're not living their legacy. For the first, so for the, the first thing is you need to figure out, is this per person living their legacy? Or are they living their parents? Or do they hate their job? This creates a lot of internal stress within the seventh chakra, which is personal purpose. So if they're having seventh chakra issues and they're not living their legacy, well, those thoughts are gonna, actually going to stir up the mind when the body's at peace at night. So from a spiritual sense, a lot of you might poo-poo this and I'll probably get tons of remarks, but it's actually the chance when your body's actually connecting with your spiritual guides. And if you're not, you're not living your legacy, you're going to be vibrating at a different frequency, which can create tension, which creates body tension, which creates sleep issues. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is times. Most people from my experiment experience typically wake up between 1 and 3 a.m. at night. The most common is like 2 or 3 a.m. I always wake up at 2. I always wake up at 3. Well, if you look at the Chinese five elements, from 1 to 3 a.m., the liver is the most active, actually, from a chi perspective, from an energy perspective. So if someone's having liver issues, whether it's detoxification issues, um, whether it's issues from the gut affecting the liver, whether it's from overloading the liver from um, improper diet or alcohol consumption prior to bed, or from taking medications. There's tons of people that take medications to sleep and still can't sleep. Or someone that is in, um, chronically angry or irritated or over angry. It winds up the liver and you're not going to be able to sleep. So we can look, start looking from a physical level as well as an emotional level into the liver using Chinese medicine to see why someone's having sleep issues. Keep in mind it's not always one thing. It's figuring out why this person has a sleep problem. And obviously, go see a Chinese medical practitioner, someone that can ha help you with that with herbs or acupuncture. The third that's most common is people are traveling through time zones. If you're traveling through time zones, you're going to have sleep problems. That messes up your circadian rhythm. We're all hardwired with a circadian rhythm. If you're traveling time zones, that can easily throw off the immune system and your circadian rhythms. So evaluate if you're traveling time zones, and if you're having sleep problems, well, the proof's in the pudding. Fourth is sugar handling problems, and this typically goes from not eating the right foods during the day, but also eating um, the wrong ratios of foods prior to bed, fo uh, meals that are high in carbohydrates, but also overloading on alcohol and overloading on desserts, which are high in sugar. That causes a huge sugar spike in the body, and the problem is you actually release adrenaline, which is going to keep you awake and you're going to have trouble sleeping. At the same time, when you go to bed and you have this huge sugar spike, you actually become hypoglycemic at night which once again, you're gonna, your body's going to release adrenaline that's going to wake you up. So if you're doing that, you need to alter your food ratios, your food frequencies, what you eat prior to bed, which I typically re recommend for most people. If they're going to eat, eat something with, that's high in fat and high in protein. Fat sedates the nervous system. It pulls you down. It's going to help with the sleep. Obviously, eliminate alcohol. The fifth reason is immune system. The immune system is most active at night. So if you have a parasite, which are they're nocturnal, if you have a fungal infection, 
Um, if you have some type of illness, if you have cancer, well, the immune system, the immune system is most active at night. So if you have a dysfunction or a chronic illness and your immune system is most active at night, it's going to kick into overdrive. And when that does that, beside waking you, it's actually going to stimulate your adrenal glands, which are going to release cortisol to help fight that inflammation, help fight the disease, which that's an awakening hormone. It's going to wake you up. The sixth reason is estrogen dominance. That means if you measure your levels through, uh, through saliva testing, you have low progesterone levels. It doesn't matter if you have normal, high, or low estrogen. It just means you have low progesterone. I have found that most women with estrogen dominance have trouble sleeping. So what I typically do is, besides using other hormones, what we do is we give them a low dose of progesterone at night, typically two to four drops every night. It's an anti-anxiety hormone. It helps them sleep. Another thing is light. Most people look at their TVs, which flicker and stimulate cortisol. They look at the computers. They play video games. They're always in a lighted room. Eliminate bright lights one hour to bed. Light stimulates cortisol, which is an awakening hormone. So if you're having trouble to sleep, eliminate bright lights a one hour before going to bed and use candles maybe to light up the room. Maybe get away from the TV, away from the computer. Spend time with your wife, your loved one. Read, relax, enjoy your quiet time. Another thing is alarm clocks. Alarm clocks give off EMF frequencies. And if you're sleeping with an alarm clock beside your bed that emits light as well as EMF frequencies, I have found personally that sleeping beside an alarm clock actually does not make me sleep. It actually keeps me awake. So put the alarm clock across the bed and you'll see in a short amount of time that you'll actually be sleeping better. Another reason is GI system problems. Well, beside parasites and fungus in the immune system, we already talked about that. If you, do, if you have a gut dysfunction, most of the serotonin, serotonin in the body is actually produced in the cut, gut. Well, melatonin, uh, serotonin is a precursor to melatonin. Melatonin is the biological clock hormone that signals your body to go to sleep. So if you're deficient in serotonin, you're going to be deficient in melatonin, which you're going to have, be, have trouble with sleeping. Now, you don't want to go out there and take melatonin. You can really mess up your body. You want to heal your gut, take the right amino acids, which will actually help with your sleep cycles. Another thing is try to get outside. We have all these people overworking and, and we're inside all day. Sunlight actually feeds the penile gland. It stimulates the penile gland in the brain, which is correlated with the seventh chakra. And if you stimulate the penile gland, sunlight, um, your body actually absorbs it and breaks it down. It actually helps to stimulate the penile gland to produce melatonin. And most people are deficient in melatonin and serotonin. So get outside and enjoy the sunlight. Um, so if we look at alternatives, what, what else is in there? You know, there's so many things with sleep. I'm just giving you some, some reasons to think about if you're having sleep problems, what to think about because everyone has sleep problems from a different reason. Well, I found that doing Qigong or Tai Chi during the day or actually prior to going to bed stimulates a parasympathetic nervous system. It relaxes you and it actually aids in sleep. Other things you can do is use our foundational nutrition and lifestyle principles by watching our YouTube clips or going to our website at eastwesthealing.com. Think about food quality and quantity. Think about the right type of movement and not doing too much movement. Hydration. Um, thinking positively. And, and there's many other recommendations. But go to our website and check that out. Or if, call, give us a call to set up a free consultation to find out what these foundational principles are. Some other alternatives are using neurotransmitters such as GABA. GABA is an anti-anxiety hormone. It's produced in the gut. If you have a gut dysfunction, you can't produce enough GABA. So you can take sublingual GABA at night prior to going to bed or if you wake up, which helps to regulate the body and help with sleep-weight cycles. Another is 5-HTP and tryptophan. If you're deficient in serotonin, you're going to be deficient in the precursors, which is 5-HTP or tryptophan. The goal is to figure out which one you're deficient in because if you're not and you're just taking 5-HTP, can actually stimulate cortisol and keep you awake. So make sure you do an amino acid test to see which one you need and at what times you need to take it. And the last thing is, you can take so many different herbs. I'm sure most of you have recommendations, but I found that valerian root helps prior to bed. Using uh, essential oils such as lavender, lavender baths help uh, with anti-anxiety, help people with sleep. Um, so, so there's many alternatives. I'm just giving you some guidelines. So the bottom line is, if you're having sleep problems, Figure out why you're having sleep problems. It could be for many different issues. And then use the appropriate principles, the appropriate guidelines, and the appropriate supplements, herbs, or essential oils to actually help with sleep. But I have found that actually using our foundational principles alone will help with sleep problems. So hopefully you've gained something from our YouTube clip. Stay tuned for some more clips. And I'll check you later. I'm out to have a great, fantastic, sunny weekend here in California.